South Korea is the country of the future where robots are watching you. This is a snitch robot. It's a country where illegal immigrants live comfortably. I could buy a car after a month of working here. It's a land of K-pop, lovely coffee shops. It's my third coffee today and cute cartoon characters. We just bought this awesome dinosaur. It's also that country that shares the border with the scary neighbor. That scary neighbor is called the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, but it's better known as North Korea. Nobody divided Korea into North and South before 1945, but during World War II it was occupied by the Japanese. In 1945 it was liberated from both sides at once. USSR troops entered from the North and the US Army from the South. When the war was over, the Soviet Union and America simply divided Korea into two. The northern half started building communism and the southern half chose capitalism. The countries coexisted like that for five years until North Korea leader Kim Il-sung persuaded Stalin to support the invasion of South Korea. Once the Soviet General Secretary gave the green light, the Korean War began. It lasted three years and has led nowhere. After three years of killing, the parties signed a peace treaty that divided the Korean peninsula in half along the same 38 parallel that the USSR and the USA used in 1945. Since then there has been a demilitarized zone around the border. I visited it with Sergei who moved to Korea from Russia two years ago. So we're going to go to North Korea and it's all dark there. North Korea is just across the river here. You see these towers too? Wow, all in barbed wire. We arrived at the banks of the Han River. This is actually where the demilitarized zone that separates the two Koreas starts. But interestingly, it looks different from them. So the South Koreans have mostly these forests and beautiful nature. There are even some farmers. The South Koreans are even trying to keep all these farmers here. Here we see the checkpoints, the soldiers, the barbed wire, the fence. This whole part right here is a fence. You can just see how very serious this is. What's interesting is that beyond the fence it's still South Korean territory. And you can see these green fields there. This is where the farmers are. North Koreans put on a show in their demilitarized zone. There's a rumor that they built exemplary villages with well-maintained cottages there. But the South Koreans say, no, we don't believe you anyway because all these peasants are just actors whose job is to show how great life is in North Korea. We know it's not real. One of the main attractions here is the Freedom Bridge. It's what we came to see here. And there's also a steam train here that used to run between the two Koreas. This train is a symbol of the tragic story of the separation of the two Koreas. It's like a monument here. It was found in some bushes after a bombing raid abandoned at some station. It was just left there like that. Sergey, have you been here before? No. See, we can do paid guided tours. It's definitely an interesting idea. This is a railway bridge which is now destroyed but it used to be right in front of the river. You can see the remaining supports of this bridge here. It's important to know that there are warning signs everywhere that say you can't point the camera sideways because there are soldiers there. They have this beautiful animation in the transparent floor where the rail tracks are. There are red arrows in front of the supports. These are bullet marks. These bullet marks show just how horrible the Korean War was. And there's this animation here showing that the bridge will someday function again and trains will run between the two Koreas and everything will be fine. But it's not certain. There used to be a railway station here and trains ran between Gaesong that is now in North Korea and Seoul. There are some souvenirs here. By the way, it's interesting that they sell South Korean, US and even Chinese flags here. There is nothing to do with North Korea. No flags, no symbols, nothing. Although it would seem that this is the place to sell souvenirs like this. It's interesting how their tourist mail works here. There are two mailboxes. One of them is blue. 
and it says here that this letter will be publicly displayed at some exhibition. So you can visit this memorial complex, share your impressions, write them in a letter and it may be displayed to the public. And here is a not so ordinary red mailbox. It's a postponed mailbox. You are invited to share your memories and your letter will be sent in a year from now. There are monuments for the unification. Wow, look, there is a North Korean flag and it's written that Pyongyang is just 153 kilometers away and Russia is 6581 kilometers away. What do they mean by Russia? I'm not too sure. Probably Moscow because Vladivostok is 726 kilometers away. And then of course, the Koreans set up an amusement park with all the touristy things in. There is DMZ now, which is listed as one of the 100 of the must-sees in South Korea. Now we're gonna try to get further into the demilitarized zone, but something tells me we're not going to be welcome there. There's a checkpoint, but we'll try to persuade the guys to let us through. We're going to North Korea. So what does it all look like? There's a checkpoint with some military men at it. Anyway, of course, there was no miracle, they wouldn't let us pass because it turns out the military was there. It's actually a military checkpoint. They've asked if we're in the army, not too sure why, but most likely they thought we're American soldiers returning to our base after a few days off. But anyway, we said no. And the guys from the Korean military police told us to turn around and leave. Tourists are not welcome there as you need a special permit to enter. So at least for today, we're staying away from North Korea. The only option is to swim across the river, but it's far too cold for that. And I also forgot my swimming shorts. So unfortunately, we didn't manage to pass the border separating South Korean paradise from the North Korean hell. Let's leave North Korea alone and go to Seoul. I'm in Seoul, the capital and the largest city in South Korea. Seoul has an area of 605 square kilometers. That's four times less than Moscow. But in terms of population, Seoul is not far behind the Russian capital. About 10 million people live in Seoul and there are 12 million in Moscow. The first settlement where modern-day Seoul has appeared over 2000 years ago and it was called Siberia. It was the capital of one of the three feudal states which then united into a single country. Since then, Korea's capital city has changed several names. It only became officially known as Seoul after the end of World War II. Look at how interestingly the navigation is done here. There's a block put in the tiles with metal plates that have street names written on and pavement stones around them. It's especially handy that the titles are duplicated in English because some cafes don't bother to translate into English and it's not exactly clear what they can offer. Parking on the pavement. Why not? This is my daughter Lena. And what's this in her hand? Oh, it's a bag of rubbish. Why doesn't she throw it away? Because there aren't any rubbish bins around here anymore. This reminds me of Japan. In Japan, it's not customary to have any bins anywhere and it's considered that you have to take care of your own rubbish, recycle it somewhere. Finding a rubbish bin in Seoul is like winning the lottery. And it looks like we won. We got the lucky ticket. We found the bin. Oh, what a beauty. I wonder if this can be recycled or not. I guess it is. Take a look at how Koreans take care of pedestrians. It's an umbrella for when it's very hot and you're waiting for the green light you can stand in the shade. That's very convenient. You can just stand under an umbrella and wait for the traffic lights to turn green. It's time to experience the Seoul Underground. The guys said that we can buy the ticket over here. I bought myself a card. Oh, you need one too. So it's children, 12 years old. Wait, they don't have kids tickets here. The teenagers tickets are sold out too. They're the ones for 13 to 18 year olds. What's the matter with this machine? Let's stop up my card. You can't go down like a superman. 
It's also not allowed to throw the back down or throw your pram. You also can't fall upside down. Here are pictures for those who didn't understand the drawings. Someone fell out of a wheelchair, someone dropped a trolley. You should not climb with your feet up when you are drunk. It says in Korean how many minutes until the train arrives. The interesting thing is that you can even see the journey of your train. What else is interesting? At each station there is a set of gas masks, torches and other rescue equipment in case of fire. There's even water. By the way, your hair is the color of the station. It must have been the metro's birthday here. Here is everyone happily congratulating the train. Oh, did someone win the lottery? What are these joyful sounds? This is the music that greets our train. It's for pregnant women. The place is specifically signposted as a maternity car park. By the way, what's interesting is that in the Korean underground everyone is numbered. I mean numbered station, numbered carriages and doors. This is the stop of the fifth carriage. First door, where there will be seats for disabled people and passengers with children. And this is respectively the fifth. The carriage and the second door, there will be maternity seats. Everything is duplicated 100 times everywhere on purpose. No one thinks about it being beautiful in any way. Lots of inscriptions, stickers. There's a lot of information, visual noise and rubbish. Just like in Japan. When you first get here, of course, it's not unfamiliar. Well, obviously the design code hasn't been here. Different signs everywhere, different fonts. It's confusing. It's just a mess everywhere. All of this is complemented by more amazing fences and quotes. If you didn't think you had enough of any visual noise, then the Koreans will once again decorate the road. Right here, I don't know everything they can about order and visual cleanliness. All in all, it won't be boring. You know who's here? It doesn't matter who's walking down the road. Why did you get so dizzy? You are so simple. Where am I? I don't understand anything. Koreans certainly love bands, especially writing more about each of their bands. This is where you can't smoke in this little square. I see, fine 100,000, you can't saw trees, you can't I guess. You can walk drunk and breathe, you can pedal, you can shit. If you're a dog, you can't build fires, you can't litter, you can't park on the lawn, you can't come on the trolley. I don't know, you can't, you can't, that you can't park on the lawn, cars, motorbikes, at the same time you can't cultivate beds, you can't pick flowers, you can't torture animals and gnomes, you can't torture gnomes and you can't walk a dog. It's a little square like this. Wow, what an amazing, just a gorgeous blooming flyover, even put up a whole banner. Dogs must be on a lead. A scooter is also prohibited. Dog on a leash. It's all by the book. By the way, especially for those who say it's very clean, if a little bit. To get away from some of the main streets, it's not gonna be so clean. Extraordinarily cute action. Friends, we are watching, take a look, dudes and weed while others stand behind the screen to keep the weed from flying at people in cars. It's the same thing over there, I mean in order to paint the grass you need three people, two of whom will hold the screen glass. It's a city hall. It's where decisions are made to make sure that everyone put up identical signs and allow parking on the pavement. I for one was sure the Koreans were disciplined, but no. Busy crossroads, all busy crossroads. Not a single one thinks with their head. There you go. The bus can get through. Fool. How can you do that? I knew there must be a sign banning the pigeons. No to the pigeons. How is it that you can sell stuff but pigeons aren't allowed here? They have I love Korea t-shirts here. Here they sell scissors in case you need to cut something. And here, my friends, is a very important sign which prohibits pigeons. 
Well, it seems to be so. Possibly they prohibit feeding the pigeons, but the image simply shows a pigeon. It probably says, let's stop the pigeons. A pigeon comes, sees the sign, he sees it and leaves, of course. Here you can see the axe scratching tools, but of course, no pigeons as they are banned. Here it says, do not feed the pigeons. There's a sign here saying that they cannot be fed, and here it just shows a pigeon. Well, I don't know, maybe they just made a double sign for those who don't understand what it says here on the wood one. Or it might actually say, stop the pigeons. They have a great hat. Wow, it's amazing. I can't believe it. Great. People who wear such a hat are instantly happy. Lena, how long has it been since we've seen any bands? Look, nothing is forbidden here. We are near a metro and there is a Starbucks on every corner. I wonder how many Starbucks they have here. We will now spend a minute exploring modern art. There is a lot of it here in Korea. There are a large number of contemporary art museums and one of them is called Lium. This is where beauty begins. I will give you a piece of advice if you are planning to visit this museum. Don't forget to check working hours. Because now, for example, I came to the museum and it's open until 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. everyone was out. So now let's explore the shops. The shops are still open. For example, look at this spectacular entrance. Wow. This is something extraordinary. And it's free apparently. Then they must sell something here. Ah, they sell some satin items here face creams and that sort of stuff. Here we have something incredibly fashionable. A special library. A slope where you can see the beautiful soul. Advertising in the city is actually a problem for many cities I know. It is not for nothing that we demand the adoption of a design code and restrict the amount of advertising, the size of the posters, and all these bright colors because the architecture is often not visible behind all of this. But when it comes to Asian cities, here on the contrary, we enjoy all these neon signs, the huge number of banners, we say, wow, that's nice, and the viewer will ask, Ilya, why do you have double standards? I don't. Why do we restrict billboards in Russia and European cities? because they spoil the architecture, hide the architecture and distract from it. There is no architecture as such here. If we imagine that all of these buildings are stripped of adverts and banners, they will simply be concrete boxes. Often, most of these houses do not assume that one enjoys the form of the buildings, that people enjoy the facades. There are no facades here. Here are these advertising posters, shop windows, signs are a part of architecture. One example is Times Square in New York which is actually a square made up of advertising. That is, there are billboards with advertisements instead of facades. There are shop windows and advertisements, some information and that's all part of the architecture. In Asian cities we see a lack of architecture that we are used to, when we enjoy the elegance of the facades and so on. But all these advertising posters, in essence, become part of the architecture we enjoy in Asia. Friends, I need to express my disappointment by Korean urbanism. How do they set up the traffic lights? Sometimes you wait 3 minutes for the traffic lights here. Or even for 5 minutes. Just like in the worst cities in Russia. To cross a complicated traffic light with all its downhill and side streets, it can take 5 to 10 minutes. It's simply unbearable. Who is in charge of setting the traffic lights up in Korea? Fire this good-for-nothing employee, fit him to the crocodiles, and put someone in place who actually knows something about traffic. Moreover, it seems that Koreans like multiplying the population of flying rats. Look how many pigeons there are. And here's a man that feeds them. 
I hope you all know that you shouldn't do that. Lina says that pigeons are nicer in Moscow. What is it? It is rubbish. What a dump we have here by the side of the road. Please do not let her. It stinks, this banner says. This looks like the Russian poet Alexander Pushkin walking with Tom Sawyer. And this is what a children's toilet looks like in Korea. It's called a family toilet. There is a wash basin for the child, a urinal, a small toilet. One for adults, which is also suitable for the disabled. And the funniest thing is that it has a seat, for while one is doing one's business, they can leave their child, the child here. And this is the baby changing room where nappies can be changed. Here you can change the nappies, weigh them, there's also some water, a tool for heating milk or other infant food, a parking space for prams and of course several breastfeeding rooms. This is what the public toilets look like, you can find them in shopping centers, airports, railway stations. They're always clean and comfortable. In this respect, the Koreans and Japanese are doing very well. Friends, here's the incredible things invented by Korean section. Next to me is this thing that resembles electric car charger, but you actually need it to do this. You need it so your children get a move on. In reality, it is actually a machine with a strong current of air coming out of it. It's like a cold dryer a tumble dryer of some sort. So you press the button and this thing helps you to fix your hairstyle or remove dirt from your shoes. It's now the section surprising things among us. Now I look like a clown. Well, I looked like a clown before as well, but now it is much more obvious. Everything seems to be wonderful in Seoul, but the local population is not very happy. This is reflected by the high number of suicides. According to the World Health Organization, Korea ranks 12th in the world in the number of suicides per thousand people. By the way, Russia is in the 11th place. In terms of suicide among women, Korea ranks 4th in the world. That's why they build this fence on the bridge. So that no one can climb over it and thus commit suicide. South Korea has a big problem with that. People work a lot, suffer from emotional exhaustion, other mental health problems and sometimes they solve them in a radical way. So that the people cannot climb over this fence, they install these wavy rotating cylinders. You can't hold onto anything here, look, it's all made so you can't step on the fence. And if you still try to climb over the fence, you'll fall back down because of this rotating thing. Obviously, that won't stop people for those who really want to do it, but it will complicate this process as much as possible. If the person wants to jump over any part of this bridge, they look in the mirror and think, I'm so cool, why do I do this to myself? And then there is a telephone on this bridge. According to the heart logo, it is a helpline, so people can call it if they need help. There are mirrors for one to see their reflection and here's the sculpture showing support to a person who's going through a difficult time. This one seems to be an office worker dressed in a suit and everything seems to be going wrong for them. They're not getting their salary, their children do not listen to them, their wife does not cook for them, and the boss, who doesn't pay their salary, pulls his cheek and supports them by saying, boy, hold on, it will be all right. So it's a sculpture that shows support. Koreans try to help people not only with these anti-suicide bridges. For example, they have a center for migrants where they will help them with their problems. In the Seoul, near the city hall, there is an amazing place called Seoul Global Center. Even if you are a tourist and need some help about Korea, you can come here, go up to the fifth floor and they will help you. 
Let's go and find out how this works. So this is run by the Seoul City Hall, everything is completely free. In addition to routine consultations, I make special ones too. So if someone finds themselves in a very complicated situation, we also have lawyers and people can book a consultation with them in advance. We also have other staff who can help with labor issues. In addition, the advice on real estate, taxes, is that also free? Yeah, it's also free, but you have to book in advance. So is it possible to receive legal help here for free? I wouldn't really call it help, but rather a consulting session, but yes. Where do you throw your rubbish if there are no bins in the street? Yes, we don't have them everywhere, but if you look, they've installed a lot more of them now. There are quite a few in the metro, or you can also throw it away in one of the nearest cafes. In Korea, we try to recycle as much rubbish as possible. You'll see this downstairs. Oh, so you recycle by putting it in the separate containers, right? So, there are recycling bins for usual rubbish, paper cups, plastic, paper, packaging and bottles. Yes. And everyone follows the rules? Yes, even when we throw rubbish away at home, we also have similar but smaller bins. And we sort the rubbish between them. Korean language classes are held here. Mm -hmm. If there are some communities of foreigners, for example, and they need to hold a meeting or event, they can come to us and we can rent them a space. So let's say the Russian community says that they need a space to prepare for a protest. Yes, against the mayor of Seoul. No, not in this case, of course. The meeting shouldn't be of any political or religious background. Well, it's just great here. Very interesting indeed. So I don't get lost in Seoul, I got myself a tour guide. It's a YouTube vlogger, Kostya Pak. Show us how this works, Kostya. Now it's the rainy season, so you have these things everywhere. It's an umbrella dryer, so that the water doesn't drip from the umbrella in the metro. It's the rainy season. Yes, I'm not a big fan of it. We are now in a very interesting place, it is the Itaewon district. I would say it's the most diverse district in Seoul and maybe in whole Korea. What is it best known for? That there used to be the main US military base here. And now it's simply a touristy and very international district. There are many contrasts that coexist in some way. For example, there is the first and the main mosque in Seoul. and about 20 meters away from its Seoul's main LGBTQIA plus district. It says that you can't leave your rubbish here. <laughs> Do not leave rubbish. Well, to be honest, normally you can't leave this type of trash here because the bags are quite expensive. There are commercial bags, so cafes and restaurants like this can leave rubbish here. But the blue ones are just ordinary bing bags. Yes, they are, yes. And it says, don't leave the rubbish. Well, yeah, I don't know why they did this. It says that the fine is 1001 here. Here in Korea, they don't follow the laws as much. In other words, rules exist to break them. Yes, but if you violate them and you get caught, it can have a major impact on your life. People are quite tolerant here, aren't they? Well, homophobia is strong here. At the same time, people don't express it violently. But you can have problems, for example, you can be rejected by your family. On the one hand, there are LGBTQIA plus flags hanging off the buildings, but on the other, there's Arabian travel, Muslim store, buffets, restaurants, and so on, because there is a mosque nearby. For example, here is an Uzbek halal restaurant, Lazat. This is the most popular street with gay clubs in Seoul, right in front of the mosque. Yes, it is. There are Muslims here, Africans there, LGBTQIA plus members over there, American soldiers and so on and so forth. As it has historically been the case that this is an international neighborhood and you can find all the things that are unusual for Korea here. There is a transgender bar over here, do you see it? Yes. You see, this is an example of how people with different beliefs can live together in peace. This is a store where Korean women sell juices and yogurts. There they have carrot juice yogurt in their fridge, all for $5. And it's supposedly very good for your health. Here's also an ice cream trolley like the ones they have in the USA. Yes, but these are high-tech ice cream trolleys. 
Everything looks nice and bright. There are these sensor screens everywhere. And you drive on it. The ice cream sale begins. There it goes. It even has a roof. Spectacular. It looks amazing. Why is it so dirty? You tell me as a Korean. Yes, yes. Explain to me, Kostya, why is it so dirty? Seoul is a very dirty city. Really, I'll put it this way. People throw cigarette butts in the street. It's not that every Korean is a perfectionist. But here the cleaning system works very well here. You will no longer see these bags here tomorrow. At 5, 6 a.m. tomorrow, the women will come out on similar trolleys, but this time they will take care of shampooing the whole floor and it will be very clean. Now it's dirty, yes. Some people dump their rubbish here. Is this the mosque you've talked about? Yes, and it has a very interesting history. Dictator Park Chung-hee sought to re-establish relations with Middle Eastern countries. That's why he allocated the land to the Muslim community here. And, if I'm not mistaken, it was Saudi Arabia that sponsored the construction of the first mosque here in Seoul. There aren't many in Korea, less than 10 I think. But this one is considered to be the main one. There is no city center as such here as in Moscow. There are different districts and their centers here. I consider there to be four main ones, for example. There is banking center, a TV center, an office one and a business center. I, for example, live in Gangam, the one in Gangam style. I don't even know which center it is. It must be a business center and it also has numerous plastic surgery clinics. Every second building there is a clinic. They consider it to be just an ordinary cosmetic treatment. It's an everyday thing for them. This is what the passage to the US base looks like. It says here that the territory is patrolled by dogs. A lot of money was spent to withdraw troops from here. Billions of dollars. Simply to create a new base for them. Of course, there are no US tanks here, anti-aircraft guns and so on. A friend of mine did his military service here, in the US Army, and he told me that everything, even the plugs, are all American type. They have their own Walmart or some other US shop with super low prices. But you have to pay in US dollars, of course. They have their own bowling, restaurants, hamburger places and so on. A huge US military base is located in the center of Seoul. Or, as it now turns out, there was one, because it is now relocating. And the US military in general, who have been here for quite some time, had a great impact even on how the city was formed, because many districts around the US base were formed according to the needs of US soldiers. And what were these needs like? They weren't always decent, let's say it this way. Idewan was formerly, until September 11, 2001, as strange as it may seem, known for sleazy bars and brothels. If I remember correctly, after 9-11, they tightened the rules for the US military. They were forbidden to go out often and many bars and brothels that used to work there were shut down. And that's when Idewan became this multicultural party district. Its character has changed. The US military lived in houses like these. Here is the entrance, the intercom. Nobody lives here now, do they? No, nobody lives here now. It's like a public area, park. But the interesting thing is that the Americans did not want to have a drainage system. Now there is a puddle here. Evil tongues will say that it's a Russian district and not the American one. Because it is typical for Russia but not for the US. Look, I have to go around all this mud because the Americans failed to make the drainage. Generally here in this garrison, which is called the Yongsan-gu, the Americans were deployed after 1945. And for, and for 40 years before that, Japanese troops were here. And before that, Chinese troops. Because in one period, Korea was occupied by the Chinese Qing Empire. Sovereignty is new to us. Does it look like the US? Maybe not. Well, the fire hydrant is American. Yes, it is actually. Look, it says here open, everything is written in English. And this is poison, it says here the rat trap. I can't believe it. Poison, do not touch. Here are the American plugs, yes. You were right, they use the American plugs here. Overall, it seems quite welcoming. 
I think if it were put up for rent now, it would be an elite district for Koreans. What is the attitude of ordinary Koreans towards US soldiers who are in Seoul? We would have to look at the polls, but in general, there is a very good attitude towards the Americans. I, from my point of view, see it as a guarantor of security for the country. People must have started to invest more in it thanks to the fact that there is a strong alley which guarantees a certain security, stability. The security of investments. I can't say I've heard anything particularly good about them. I heard something a bit bad that they like to drink and party, have their own culture. They cause a lot of fights. I don't want to create a stereotype, but I've heard a lot of time these stories that soldiers really like to fight here. South Koreans are not very aggressive and it's very rare for them to fight. The base is huge. I mean, we're just in this area here, and it's that huge with lots and lots of buildings and everything. Here you can register to pay with your hand. What is it? I've not seen this before. So you just pay with your fist. So this is a shop without salesmen. The way all of these shops work is that there are a lot of sensors and surveillance cameras that record that one took some item and you're automatically charged after leaving the shop. This shop is like any other ordinary store, however. There are no sensors, no cameras, it's all about trust. This is only possible in South Korea because they realize why spend money on sensors, cameras or some ingenious security systems when you can base everything on trust. Say, take it guys, and then pay honestly. They even have alcohol, look, wow. Wow, they have wine. So one can... Ah, no, see I wasn't entirely right. It says here that everything you are doing is being recorded. I, and my wife too, have never been asked our age when we bought alcohol. Yes, see, so a child can buy alcohol here. I'm not sure it's legal. We have a child. We can check if it works. We have a child. Lena can buy a bottle of wine. What if we break a law? Koste is afraid because we will leave and he still has to live here. So you scan a few codes and this funny bear sells you food. The whole system is based on trust. Generally, from the point of view of interface, it all looks very complicated. There are a lot of advertisements, gadgets, here are some straws. What are they even here for? There are also some sticks here. Put that in here, take that out of there. I'll be honest, it is quite difficult. It is not intuitive at all. The interface is a disgrace. In addition, the Koreans are trying to force people to take the stairs instead of the escalators. It is worth noting that there are not many escalators in the metro, so anyway you'll have to walk up the stairs. But despite this, the authorities seek to actively encourage people to walk up the stairs. For example, there's this musical staircase. Come down, show us how it works. There are staircases that calculate calories. They have some motivational counters and other activities to keep you walking and healthy. Explain to me, what's the hype around these photo boots? I don't know, they're actually very popular in Japan. They've been trending in Korea for the past 5 to 6 years. People come here, choose hats, masks, glasses and stuff, and take photos as a souvenir. So it's like a real-life Instagram. Yes, it's fun, and it's great fun to have these photos. I myself have about 30 to 40 sets like this. Spectacular photos. This is what a Korean homeless sleeping on overpasses look like. This one built a whole house, they have a suitcase next to it and nobody steals it. 
That is, they also have social problems, homeless people live like this at overpasses. Oh look, there's another house. Lina says not to peek into other people's houses without asking. Of course. Why are the buses different colors? Tell me about it. The blue and green ones circulate within the city. Green circulate within the administrative district. The blues can go outside the administrative district, but within the city. There are also the red ones, which are a little different. They travel to other cities, but still close to Seoul. Korea has a highly developed civil society. People here go out and protest if they don't like the government's actions. And even the president can be imprisoned for corruption. Being a president of South Korea does not guarantee immunity. Over the past 30 years, five heads of republic were accused of bribery and abuse of power. At the same time, three Korean presidents were imprisoned for corruption. The son of one of the presidents were imprisoned and the other could not withstand the social pressure and committed suicide. The most high-profile case was that of Korea's first female president, leader of the conservative party, daughter of the dictator who governed South Korea from the early 1960s to the late 1970s, Park Geun hye became president after the 2012 elections. During her government, there were rumors that she surrounded herself with shamanic as secretary and advisors, to whom he revealed national secrets. In 2016, the parliament declared Park Geun hye a no-confidence motion by accusing her of corruption and abuse of power. Investigation began during which it became known that Park Geun hye together with her friend, the follower of the mystical cult, Chui Soon Sil, extorted money from corporate bosses. For example, the vice president of Samsung Electronics, to win the support of the head of state, spent more than $6 million on equestrian equipment and training for Choi Soon Sil's daughter. In the end, four other people joined the president and faced charges. Her secretary, a shaman friend, the head of the Lotte Group Consortium and the vice president of Samsung Electronics. Chui Sung Sil was sentenced to 20 years in prison for corruption, along with a fine of more than $16 million. Park Geun hye herself was sentenced to 24 years in prison and a fine of $17.5 million. In December 2021, the authorities pardoned the former president due to her deteriorating health. Surprisingly, Korea also has shanty towns, but some countries would dream of their cities resembling Korean shanty towns. We toured the outskirts of Seoul with another YouTube blogger, Maria, who has lived in Korea for 20 years. Well, it all looks pretty nice here. You said there are Korean shanty towns here. Yes, we are going there now. We'll go in a little deeper and we will see the Korean shanty towns, the real shanty towns. Here they sell land, not flats, but a house with land. And the rubbish is left out here. Today is quite clean, actually. There is usually a lot more rubbish. The truck passes by and picks it all up. See, there are bars on the windows. What for? So that no one breaks in. Can people actually break in here? Of course, yes. So burglar can get in through the window. About 10 to 15 years ago, the girls were telling me that while they were baiting someone, look in and scare them. or some perverts may look in to watch. Well, I didn't expect that. They are planning on building huge flats here. A huge city and the prices will be so high that it will be cheaper to travel into space. There is an abandoned house here and there is a dump. There is a lot of rubbish there. Well, it doesn't look that bad. It looks like a normal residential area. There are some decorative lines here, a chain. All very fashionable. Yes, there are even abandoned houses and flats where nobody lives anymore. In other words, the state, the building companies are buying them bit by bit. All of those abandoned houses. And little by little they will build it up once they have the access. See how they covered the roofs with canvas so they don't leak? Our roof was also covered, but it still leaks. No one lives here. Yes, so there is now a landfill under the window. Will someone clean it up at some point? It can stay like this, no? I doubt it. I was here a month ago and it was the same. Are you a Korean citizen? No. I have temporary residence. Ah, a residency permit. Yes, but I have rights, because temporary residence is a stepping stone to citizenship. I just can't vote or borrow money from the bank. 
Well, doesn't your husband pay you alimony? No, he doesn't pay anything, nor does he come to see his daughter. I have already handed over all the papers to the administration of the house, and I was approved for a loan of 85 million won, which they handed over with a deposit for the flat. Wait, they gave you 85 million? Yes, I pay 145,000 for this. Well, for using this loan. What can you spend this 85 million on? Only in the flat. They are kept by the owners of the house. I will have to return them when my daughter turns 18. What does this advert say? It also says no littering. And if someone dumps rubbish here, they will have to pay the fine. Do people ignore these posters? Yes, yeah, some do as you can see. It obviously didn't appear here out of nowhere. Of course, it is obvious, but they probably don't get the fines. But look, there's a picture of someone littering. They've taken a photo of that person. Yeah, but you can't identify anyone from this photo. As far as I am aware, paper waste is collected here, because it has been here for a long time. They must not have had time to pick them up, so it all got wet. But nobody picks it up, that is, it must have been here for a long time. Someone is locked out because of it. What does it say here? No parking. This is not a parking place. No, it is a wonderful district. Authentic. Yes. The main disadvantage of all these shanty towns in Korea is that the descents here are very steep. Lena, show them how you're climbing up. The slope is about 30 degrees. Phew. Up and down, up and down. Thank goodness there is no snow here. They say that sometimes there is. You can see that someone who is not very sociable lives here. The door is full of fines and receipts. Near every no littering sign there is litter. And they could have littered here in this corner because there is no sign there. So supposedly you can litter here. But people specifically chose the place where there is no litter sign so that the fine up to 1 billion won can be issued to them. Here is another abandoned house. Everything's dirty. People just dump all their waste here. It stinks. There's some door here. Someone hit the air conditioner with the car. Stuff you see here is something that no one will ever clean up. These are the old quarters of Seoul. They won't be here for long. Soon it will all be demolished. Now we go to a big food market, the street food market. It smells good already. You can buy a belt here. It smells like there'll be a lot of tasty stuff here. For example, crabs, soups, people are already eating. It all looks very appetizing. Well, we are finally in the world of Korean abundance. There is noodle, some guts. There's bologna made from some guts. We decide it's not time for rice, so out of the whole variety of Korean street food, we opted for the dumplings. It is actually quite nice here. Everything is clean and tidy. This is what a portion looks like. Here there are about 5, here 7, there are some fried ones too. It all costs approximately 6,000 to 7,000 won per portion. They turn out to be good. Although they are not like the Russian ones, but they taste good. Everything is getting fried here. The food is getting chopped, cooked and steamed. Here you can see the food itself. Here is some watermelon. Bananas and watermelon. Two please. Of course, counting the number of different cafes, restaurants and market stalls, Korea is about 10 times richer than any European city. Koreans like animals, especially petting them in cafes. For example, here there is a cafeteria with raccoons, sheep, meerkats, cats, dogs, there are lots and lots of animals. For example, down here there is a cafe with sheep. But for me it is difficult to combine a meal with petting sheep. A directional pointer to a coffee shop with cats. Kitty kitty kitty. The cat cafe turned out to be a real hidden door.
the cafe with the cats turned out to look like a house of some crazy cat fans here who brought in dozens of cats from the street with varying degrees of wear and tear and now lives together with them. I wouldn't call it a cafe because it doesn't smell like one. It smells like a huge cat toilet. Lena, what does it smell like? It smells of cats. It smells a lot like cats. The entrance fee is 9000. These cats scream. There are more people coming in now. For this price you can pet the cats, play with them, usually nobody cares what you're doing with the cats, no one is watching them. The girl who runs the cafeteria is indifferent. She collects the money at the entrance and that's it. People come to play with the cats, but most of the cats are sleeping. They have their little beds here. They also sleep on the tables. In addition, they have a whole house of cats from which they sometimes emerge. They also have places to sleep next to the wall. Now we saw the cat cafe and I get a little bit sad in places like that because I don't think cats are happy there. It resembles an unusual environment for cats. They are not loved there. Everything is a bit dirty there. Very strange people come in. It's okay if the person is nice, but surely not all people are treating them well. I don't think it's very ethical to run places like this. Do you think the cats are happy there? No. I don't think they are too. Here's another cafe. Here they are torturing the raccoons or meerkats. The meerkat cafe is closed. Here you can see what it looks like. The meerkats are in a small room. They stand on one shoulder, so they have these collars. There are some foxes. Well, I'm not an expert of kangaroos, foxes and meerkats, but if you are, write in the comments how humane this treatment is to them. How humane it is to lock them in a space and let in people who cuddle, hug and feed them. Do the animals like it? How comfortable it is for them? I prefer normal cafes where no one tortures animals. There are a lot of them in Seoul. They grew a lot of vegetation. There are two floors you need to order here. And you can sit inside and there are also these tables all full of vegetation. There are flowers and pots everywhere. Seoul has a huge number of extraordinary cafes, restaurants, many are stylish, cozy and not so expensive. Like this one for example. The interior is generally made of very affordable materials. They've used some storage trays, flower pots, wiener, all not very expensive but very cozy. This is a street terrace. There are tables everywhere you look. There are not many people now because it's 11 o'clock, people are working and in the afternoon there will be many more people. I can't believe what I see. We are going to the Hello Kitty fan club. We're not going there. Yes, we were. There's a dog with poop on its head and he's happy. It should be a symbol that there is no need to be sad. You can buy something from a vending machine, some toys. There is a photo area here. You can take a photo as a souvenir. All these people are in the queue here. All these people could be in a Kia and Hyundai factory or LG making air conditioners. But they're queuing up to have their photo taken with stuffed toys. On the other hand, we could also be in a factory, for example in Moskvich, making cars, but we are walking around Seoul and see these amazing places that Koreans invented here. By the way, the good thing about the Korean cafe is that they have examples of food in front of the entrance. Let's take a look at another spectacular cafe. There are some tables here, plants growing. We continue walking and see another cafe with some chairs. And there's another trendy place downstairs, also a cafe or something. 
and there's another one here too. And here's Leonid Brezhnev's kiss with Eric Honecker as it is on the Berlin Wall. And it says Dankeschön, Berlin. So it's a Berlin cafe. Do you know who Brezhnev is? Yes, it is someone from the Soviet Union. Someone from the Soviet Union. And Honecker? Honecker is someone from Germany. Yes, someone from Germany and they're kissing, you see. Khrushchev is the president, right? He was a general secretary and then it was Brezhnev. Khrushchev came after Stalin. When Stalin died, it was Khrushchev, then they kicked Khrushchev out. And then came Brezhnev. And Brezhnev kisses Honecker. That's on the Berlin Wall. It is one of the most famous graffiti. Why do we only talk about food? It is time to discuss spiritual food. For example, historical heritage. Seoul was generally badly destroyed during the Korean War, that time when the North was battling the South. But some heritage did remain in the South Korean capital. Seoul is not just about skyscrapers, there is also a historic village here. But its history is not as ancient as it might seem, because all this beauty was erected in 1998. In other words, the village is not even 30 years old. It is very young. But it's historical. It's called Namsangol. All the Koreans built a modern replica, so there are authentic houses with authentic interiors, as well as typical things, so one can come and get acquainted with the culture and customs of the Koreans. This is something very cool. It's a pity they didn't explain what it is in English. It seems to be sweet. It's probably a room where they sell sweets. Another house. This is the kitchen, here are some utensils. The oven. Yes, the heritage of Korea's past is not very impressive, but what a future it has. They must have grown tired of waiting for the wonders of Korean technologies. Let's take a look at them. An advertising tool passes through this shopping center and takes pictures of everyone. What is it going to do? It wants to drive around me. And if I go this way? It still goes around me. Smart. Ah, it looks out for the COVID infected. It takes everyone's temperature. Here I am, I have 36.2. So this is the robot with a thermal camera that goes around looking for sick people. I wonder what will happen if it does find someone sick. Imagine if it throws a net over you and takes you straight to the police. Everybody thinks, yeah buddy, you're a nice robot, let's play with you. And it turns out that it's a snitch robot. It identifies all faces and takes everyone's temperature. A short review of Korean post office. This is what a mail department looks like. Here we see a lot of banners, directional pointers, arrows, navigation. Everything is repeated many times. There are some pens, they are all different in color and design, so that no one gets bored and no one relaxes. In other words, there is visual chaos here. The interesting thing is that there are even glasses here. There are green chairs, there are metal chairs, there are leather sofas, there are gray chairs, gold pots. If you don't like these chairs, there are red chairs that swivel. For all tastes, there is something for everyone. The real miracles of the future must await us in the city of Songdo. It was built in the early 2000s and was originally intended to be the city of the future. To create it, companies took advantage of new tech, aimed at making people's lives simpler. Each street here is equipped with sensors that monitor energy use and transport flows. And the waste from the flat is sent to the factory through a pneumatic tube where it is processed and recycled in one go. Incidentally, all flats are equipped with sensors so that the homeowner can access all amenities via an app. They also say it has plenty of green areas, public spaces and cycle paths. That all sounds very nice, but in reality no one seems to have needed Songdo. In the 17 years, only 180,000 people arrived here, although its creators expected to see 250,000 people. Songdo also did not become a business megacity or the center of education. It was not possible to attract entrepreneurs here even with tax benefits. Media likens Songdo to a dying ghost town where humans are rarely found. Let's see what's wrong with the city of the future and why no one is moving there. As it is a very modern city, or at least as they planned, there are lots of eco-scooters here. But it's practically impossible to see people with scooters in Korea because you need to obtain a driver's license to use one. This district does actually look deserted. I 
I don't know if it's dying in the grating, but it all looks rather sad. You can see these by these pads, they're full of weeds. Soon the forest will grow over the pavement. Here are the famous pneumatic rubbish tubes. These receiving stations where the rubbish bags can be thrown, but you need a key to get something in there. It exclusively works for the local population. They bring everything here and there's a special network for waste pipes, where your rubbish bag flies to a special distribution station. There are some other things, they're called smart line and everything has touchpads. You put tap your card here and a portal, or something opens. My card doesn't work. Open up, open up, I want to throw rubbish away. Someone simply left their waste near this miracle. And this thing here screams with the ultrasound when the car leaves up of the car park to make people go crazy. It's amazing, but few know that this layer can be peeled off. It will be beautiful then. What is that? It's a sad bag of rubbish lying in a puddle. When a real estate developer or a politician tries to sell you the idea of a city of the future, most likely they're not being honest. Yes, it is very nice if they want to sell a house at a price 20 to 30% higher than usual, attract people here and say, we will have a city of the future. Normally in a city of the future there are various robots, screens and other high-tech things, which do not really influence anything. But in Song though, they went further. They invented an underground rubbish pipe, innovative by local standards. You can see this quite often in Europe, particularly in Scandinavia. They even did it in Russia during the 1980 Olympic Games. They were doing experiments with these underground rubbish tubes, but it doesn't matter. But in Korea, it is not common, it is one of their specialties, the underground rubbish tube. It has a lot of sensors which turn on traffic lights and street lights. All the elements of the smart city, which doesn't surprise anyone anymore, were introduced here in the early 2000s. It doesn't look like the city of the future at all. Well, something obviously went wrong. I expected there to be a robot directing the traffic, but there is an ordinary man with a cane. I was about to say that cars let pedestrians pass here, but no. Someone was driving and didn't give way to me. In Korea, it is generally not common to allow pedestrians to pass. If you are at a junction, they will let you pass, and if there is no traffic light, well, good for you if you can cross, and if not, well, tough luck. But then again, you will able to see how Korean medicine works. A rare phenomenon, a cyclist. He even has an umbrella. Nobody respects the cyclist, he had to suffer from shameless pedestrians who avenge the humiliations of drivers. The important elements of virtually any Korean shopping center, of course, are the vending machines. Pay attention to the markings, some are cool and some are hot. Luggage lockers are super convenient, they are everywhere. There are ATMs, obviously, but they also have a special parking for dogs. Here you can leash your dog and serve food or water. There is a tap here. Wow, show us how it works. It is a bag for the dog poop. It is quite extraordinary. Ah, you must sweep it. I mean, these things are used as a shovel. This is how it's supposed to be done and then you wrap it up like this. So it's all biodegradable, very good for the planet. You can throw it in here. Where have you seen such spectacular dog parking in a shopping center? Nowhere. We are in the city center. It is the main commercial street. All the shops are here. The pedestrian street, restaurants. It is the very center. You can imagine anything more central. There are some half-inhabited offices and back here the wasteland begins. 
That is, journalists who wrote that this city is dying out, they were right. There are so many weeds here. The variety of weeds is just like the Russian one. There are only a few concrete blocks missing, otherwise it would be a typical outskirts of St. Petersburg. There's already rubbish being dumped here. So that's the wasteland, they haven't built anything here. This all looks very, very sad. Same as the Parnas district of St. Petersburg. The only advantage of this whole district is that here they have normal vegetation. They planted a huge number of trees along the side of all the streets, which is of course very nice. But right here the whole housing estate is full of weeds. Nobody uses these pavements. In addition to robots, illegal immigrants in Russian districts, in Korea there are a few resorts. For example, Busan, Korea's second largest city. Busan's main asset is its location. The city is located on the coast of the Sea of Japan. Due to its location, the port of Busan has become the largest port in Korea. And in 2001, it was the third largest container port in the world. Many people learned that this city exists from the horror film Train to Busan, which grossed more than 96 million worldwide. Although all the action took place on the rail tracks, so viewers never saw Busan itself. But that's okay, I'm going to show it to you now. Two and a half hours on the train and we are in Busan. It is the second largest city in South Korea. It's a southern, there's sea, port. For now we are welcomed by people with banners who want something but I don't understand Korean. There is a bus stop, there are bus lanes, just like in Seoul. Buses are old, not very comfortable. They could have made more impressive buses. That's okay. It is very convenient that the bus number is written in large letters right on the vehicle. Buses stop like this in these queues. So you can simply not notice when your bus comes. Bus number 26 brought us somewhere to our bus stop. What does the bus stop look like? There is a little space. Here is a table with wireless phone chargers. Oh wow, it actually works. It charges the phone. As in many places in Korea, little thought is given to the design of the environment. There is total chaos in the architecture, signage and banners, as in many other elements of the urban area. Here are some strange tree stumps, there are some flower pots, fences and of course everything is full of adverts. Posters, banners, thank goodness I don't understand Korean so for me it's just like a pretty ornament. Songdo beach, one of the most amazing beaches in the world and one of the most famous beaches in Busan. Look at his beauty. Again, from a visual and urban environment design perspective, it's all very sad. Like, like what even is this? But I'm happy with the cleanliness. There are no cheap bars as we are used to. They're all further away. The sand is wonderful. There are some sculptures there. And there's even a container, which is actually a shower. From a design point of view, none of these things go together. Here are these benches with something weird in the middle. Looks like the tools of squeezing laundry in the washing machine. Here is a swing for the garden, only a few garden dwarfs are missing. This navigation, another navigation, everyone does what he or she wants without thinking of a common style. Another kind of beach navigation, this one looks fun. Here are some sculptures, mock-ups, next to which you can take some pictures. What stunning houses on the beach, look at these tile whales. It looks like a toilet. But unfortunately, it is closed. Maybe when they removed the bins so that no one could throw rubbish inside them. They also closed the toilets so that they didn't have to clean them. What an ingenious plan. So this is where the rich live? In this tower? How much does a flat there cost? About two or three million? Dollars? Yes. We can see some expensive cars here. This is where Busan's rich live. They sit on the marble benches and live in these residential complexes. 
well, from an architectural point of view, there's nothing surprising. These are just the usual towers we're all used to. According to Korean standards, everything is done nicely. Although they could have built a cycling lane for the rich, so that the elders wouldn't have to cycle on the pavement. Well, the problem with new neighborhoods is that they're all similar. It's hard to understand where you are. Maybe we are now in China or Hong Kong? Just infinite glass towers. I don't like that, it has no soul. In the new districts, there is no design code, no order. You can see posters with half-naked men, banners, ads. The amount of advertising is simply terrible. Everyone does what they want, there are no shop front windows rules, no regulations concerning posters and entrances, there is nothing. It's a simple mess, and they are content with that. Where are the cycle lanes? Why do cyclists ride on the pavements? There are no cycle lanes. What is that, Lena? Why? I thought we were going to get here, see how fancy it all is, and we will bring new information to Russia. We will show how it has to be done, but we won't. Look, they wrap the poles in this blister material, so that no one sticks the ads on. I wouldn't be surprised if it actually said do not stick ads on here. But someone couldn't hold on, made a metal plate and stuck a bunch of ads on it at once. Ah, oh, look at this cute dog. My street in Busan seems to be closed. There are all these fences and they are changing the tiles. They need to change them, but I don't see a single employee. Maybe it's their lunchtime. What can you do with fences? Right. Throw rubbish behind them. Oh, wow. Here in Busan, there are a huge number of markets. And you know what? It appears that parallel imports from China have already been established. Because they have a huge amount of replicas, they have everything you want. Whether it's Nike or Louis Vuitton. I actually thought they have strict rules regarding this in Korea. Yes, you have to search for them, but they are easily found. They are just not right in your face. There are a lot of fakes here. And of course, there are a huge number of shops with accessories, cases, some random things. What even is that? I don't even understand. They can give you an ear piercing in 20 different spots to put more stuff in there. They are cooking up some delicacies right here. Too bad we are not hungry yet. Wow, what amazing dumplings. I can't believe it. Hello? No, no, we are just watching. Everything looks so delicious. When they are cooking something in these market stalls, it really does look amazing. I am at the main Busan railway station. Let's see what the modern railway station looks like. A huge amount of advertising causes a bit of tension. That begins to counteract with navigation signs. Main thing at the train station is navigation, so that it's easy to find and reach the necessary platform. But as there are so many ads which are large and have the same color as the navigation, like this billboard there, and as it's all the same color, they begin to conflict with each other. And while one looks for the necessary sign and directional pointer, it takes a while to figure out what you need. Some posters are translated into English, which is fine, but there are many posters like this one. Here is a panel with different directions with blue background. And this is the one in the ticket box, also with a blue background. It usually works well if the background colors are different. For example, paint everything to do with the platforms in one color. All matters relating to the purchase of tickets and luggage in different color, so that people can fence what they need. The color coding here is used for exit only. There are many cafes like this one at the train station where you can buy some food for the trip. An ordinary Korean bakery looks like this. By the way, here people eat whatever they want on trains, even if their food is smelly. I have not noticed any restrictions on eating on trains. 
This is what the ticket boxes look like. Their departure screen and the ticket machine have everything translated into English, so you can buy a ticket without any problem. But the best way is to buy a ticket through the app. Korean Railways have an app, and the interesting thing is that even if you buy your ticket on the website, you will only have the booking confirmation there. The actual ticket itself will be on the app. So without an app, you will not receive your verification code. The luggage store is very well organized, just like in other places. You can see the luggage racks like this in several train terminals in Korea, and in many underground stations. They are automatic. Do we want to leave or collect our luggage? We want to leave it here. We can choose how we want to pay. This can be done by cash, money card and credit card. A small box costs 1000 won, medium is 2000. And the extra large one is 3000 for 2 hours. Luggage storage is very convenient as its location. There is no need to go downstairs to go through baggage inspection as they do in some countries. They let you put something bad in there. Here there is freedom, order and no restrictions. Everything is simple and quick. A quick note about T-Money cards. There are different ones. For example, mine looks like this. They are available in different designs. Its primary function is that it's public transport pass that you use in different public transport. But it is not quite that simple. It can be used to pay for metro and bus journeys not only in Seoul. For example, with the Seoul card I travel in Busan without any problem. They also accept them to pay for fares on toll roads. In front of the entrance to a shop they have labels of the cards they accept. There are different payment methods, WeChat, T-Money, so you can pay with a transport card in this store. In Japan you could also buy a pass and it works in many different places. I remember that when I bought a pass in the Tokyo metro, I've then used it to buy stuff in the Tokyo airport duty free. In other words, they are accepted everywhere, even at the airport duty free. As we come out of the train station, there is a recreation area. The station itself is very ordinary, there is nothing to praise this train station for. This is not Holland, my friends. There are train terminals and the transport system is a beauty. One comes to any train station and sees wonders. They are building something here. There is a sad excavator, a bridge, so maybe one day something magnificent will appear here. In addition to modern urbanism, Busan also boasts historical heritage. For example, the Buddhist temple Hedong Yuong, built in the 14th century, if not earlier. As we are in an ancient temple, there must also be fun things to do here. Some cool photo zones for Instagram. Beautiful trees with flowers and candles, of course. But candles in Korea are not like candles in Russia. Their candles are big. For example, there is this 15,000 won candle with a luxury pink dragon. It must bring happiness, I guess. You can buy bird food for 10,000. There probably are some birds around here. For 5,000 you can buy a simpler candle. It is in a special plastic cup. For a gift. Ah, so this is a cow. Yes. It is due to it being a cow year. And this is a horse? Yes. It's because of the zodiac signs. I get it now. They write their wishes, light them and leave them here. It seems that these wishes are then fulfilled. You pay 5000 for a candle so it must come true. Unlike Seoul, Busan was not affected by the Korean War. 
It even became the temporary capital of South Korea, because a US military base was located here and the ultimate limit of the country's defense. That's why refugees were actively coming here. In particular, they inhabited the village of Gamshion, which has now become a place of interest. To make this village nice, the government had to invest money and build a cultural center. Unfortunately, due to the bad weather and fog, not everything is so clear, but this village is famous not only for its many galleries, restaurants and cafes, but also a beautiful viewpoint on the mountain. So it looks like this. Here is the entrance. They have clear directions because it is a tourist attraction. There is a Catholic church here, and someone painted a huge yellow heart on the street. So the way to the temple is through the heart. I can't say anything about this fence here, maybe it is also a work of art, an exhibition of fences or something. As always, in Korea there is a wide variety of fencing. There is a chrome plated one, one painted in brown with pagoda like roofs. On the other side there is a wave one, a matte aluminum one, one with little blue things and so on. Here are some other things too, so it is incredibly beautiful. The only problem is that it is a bit slippery in the rain. We may have to look for a hospital. This is what this district looks like. There are many, many cats. There are cat drawings everywhere. Cats, countless cats. But I haven't seen any real cats yet. Maybe they hid from the rain. As it is a cultural district, there are many cultures here. For example, this fish, made from boards in the shape of fish. It is 2012 project. Before, it was just a district near the port, so they disassembled the boxes and with simple cutouts and some nails, they made these little fish shapes. They are triangular, but with the nails it looks like a fish. And these little fish make a giant one, which serves as a decoration on this wall. So the walls become a wonderful background for the photos. We can't really see because of the fog what this wonderful cultural village actually looks like, but it reminds me a lot of Latin American shanty towns. The only difference being that it's perfectly clean here. But apart from that, in terms of architecture, with these colorful little houses, steep descents, narrow passage, it is like being in the favelas of Brazil. or perhaps in Venezuela or Colombia. I don't understand how they build these houses, but it all looks really interesting. There aren't too many people, as everything is closed because of the rain, so it's a little less fun. But these descents look gorgeous and tempt the tourists to explore them. Too bad we're not healthy enough to go down the slippery slope. In the meantime, Lena found something to eat for me. What food will it be? Wow, amazing. Pity it's closed. They sell bread in the shape of poo. Very interesting, thank you, Lena. Here is another viewpoint, but we can't see much from here either. Koreans really like taking pictures, so everywhere there are tourists, there are photo zones. Whether it's cultural district, temple or simply the city center. For example here, they've made this colorful fence with little models of the colorful shanty towns that they have here. It is the symbol of this district. You can take photos with these at the viewpoints in these special photo zones. There is a chrome pole with a camera that is keeping an eye on litterers. Of course, there are lots and lots and lots of bin bags around it. Nobody knows why this happens. Probably Koreans want to become famous. Maybe they have a TV show where they show the wicked men who throw rubbish where it doesn't belong. And in this not so nice way, people are looking for their moment of glory. Here again, there is a sign saying no littering. That means there will be a landfill in front of this sign. And the funny thing is that they treated the rubbish with respect. It was carefully placed on a sofa. Busan has not only historic villages, but also modern ones. Even a smart village. 
That's right, my friends. While there are still whole dumb countries in the world, the Koreans have smart villages. The first thing we see is that they have not yet learned how to lay the tiles. The tiles that were initially here are sinking and are in a bad state. Unfortunately, they didn't put the tiles smartly in the smart village. You can already see that the water accumulates here. There may be a landslide towards the center of the earth. Someday a smart inhabitant of the smart village will fall into a hole and disappear. And the other are going to look for him. Be careful, you better not jump here. Oh no, what's going on here? I feel like you will be deported after that. The government won't be happy with what we've shown. Take a look at this innovative flycatcher. Of course, just like there should be, there's a terrifying spider living here. There's a nice green can opie, and that must be a cigarette butt can. Let's see. Yes, none of them human qualities are alien to Koreans. Look, it's a cigarette butt box with water inside. It's clear that some of the people who live here grew up in Burliovo, which is just south of Moscow in some old five-story house and came to share their international experience as part of some culture exchange program. Although it should be a Nescafe coffee container for it to be authentic. It is clear that there is a smoking area here, but it seems to me that as we are in the most modern neighborhood in Korea, as I was told, an ashtray could be fitted in somehow. Maybe the local high-tech scientist will come up with something. Something better than a container where they used to put a goat's milk. Now we go out on the street. Everything is beautiful at last. Seems we just started in the wrong place. There are some semi-detached houses. How much does a house cost? Wait, they give them out for free? Yes, they are provided as part of the government program. People write to government body and they put these townhouses up. They make an application and just get a house here? I think there's some kind of a raffle. Ah, so it's a lottery. So it must have been the mayor's friends who won the lottery. It starts to be interesting here. There's some sort of an automatic barrier. The barrier is beautiful, beautiful and modern. They wish us a good day and also have their own brand of spider web. It looks like having a spider web in this town's design code. And there's also a spider here, of course. Here again, it all came crashing down. They put up the cones like, yeah, we'll fix it in one day. Hopefully they will, but that's not certain. There's a beautiful avenue, beautiful street lights. Now let's see what a modern garbage center looks like. They do not accept waste here. I mean, food waster. There is a machine that you can put in cans for recycling. You can bring them here and even earn something for this can. It normally should be closed and opens when you tap the car there, but everything broke down, so it is now open all the time and we can see what's inside. And this one is for paper, and it still seems to be closed. So you should put different types of rubbish in all these different boxes. There's a free charger here. I don't want to say anything bad, but it looks like a real spider attack. There's a huge number of giant spiders here. I have never seen anything like this. Maybe they are even dangerous. They're a key to a good ecosystem. He's making his web now. He's making a new one as we speak. This bench is equipped with solar panels. First, it is not very comfortable because the surface texture is quite strange. Also, it is hot. There are wireless smartphone chargers everywhere. So you can just leave your phone here to charge and be a happy person. There are some miracles of urban planning, an exhibition of curtains or some plants or something. But the most interesting thing is this house, printed on a 3D printer. This is not so innovative now. People have printed Bing stuff like that for a while now. But let's see how it turned out for the Koreans. They grabbed a the printer and printed it all out. And they came up with a house like this. Here you can see all of the layers and then top paint coat. There is nothing inside. Only the wood. It looks like this. This house is... Well, is it a real house? Or did they just make it to test it? Because it is quite strange. Because it is all crooked.
And here they made these metal corners and it's not clear why they needed to do this in the corners. It is nice here, there is a nice housing estate. It seems it's quite boring here, there is nothing exciting yet. There are already families living here, right? Are they the ones who won the lottery? Now they are like hermits on a desert island. I like these clothes they made for the pines. Some little suits for the trees. It's so cute. There are people walking here. They all have several cars. They live very well. I don't understand why they haven't thought about parking. Why didn't they plan for them to be pretty? Rubbish collection point looks like. But for some reason, something must always be broken. Here is this bin for mixed waste that is broken. This one here also looks broken. And everything here is full of cobwebs. What does it say here? Temporarily out of order. Do not touch. And here are the bins we're used to. Where all these modern ones break, they end up using the ordinary ones. Here is an electric charger. So here you can charge your car, and here you can charge your phone. When we are talking about a city of the future or a very modern district, I've imagined that there will be no cars. They should have resolved the issue of private vehicles somehow. For people to leave their cars somewhere on the border and be carried over here by some robots. It says no smoking. I would have expected robotic bees in a smart city to put out one cigarette if they smoke in an appropriate place or to automatically cut it with a laser. No, they should bring that snitch robot here. Yes, yeah, that's a good idea. And what does it say on these orange things? No parking allowed. In other words, they filled the whole neighborhood with these infinite ugly cones. He's parked in an inappropriate spot. Weather forecast 24 degrees. And there's a giant spider again. Look, it's a spider king. I think it's the main one of all spiders. Oh, what's that? Ah, it's me. Now it's going to say how tall I am. You are 179 centimeters. Well, not quite. Maybe if I'm on my tiptoes. I have a spider right on my head. This is a public center. They have a barista robot here. Again, the machine prepares the coffee and the robot gives you the cup. Korean's favorite drink is an iced Americano. In my opinion, it's nonsense, but they drink it and I have to accept it. When we see the barista robot's arm doing its job, the cup is filled. And now the robot is going to give me my cup of coffee. First, it grabbed the ice in the ice machine and then it placed it in a normal Americano coffee. As it already has ice in it, it will become cold. I wonder what will happen if I move the cup. Ah, oh, well, no, it doesn't recognize that I've done this. He almost knocked it over. Thank goodness I'm a good natured guy and didn't move it too far away. I thought it contained sensors that show the arm the location of the cup, but it simply has pre programmed moves and algorithms that it follows. What are you going to do? Give it to me. Then you go like an ordinary person, grab a napkin, sugar, and most interestingly, there are lids instead of sugar here. But that doesn't matter. No, you have sugar there. No, that's sugar syrup. It says here that the sugar must be here, and there are lids instead. They needed to put the lids somewhere. It's actually quite a good example, because most people have an idea of the future, like some sort of high-tech exhibition. For example, an artificial arm that prepares your coffee or an inefficient and expensive bin that no longer works and has broken down so quickly. That's not really what the future is about. It's about a different way of life. What would I like there to be in a district of the future? Interesting common spaces to share with neighbors. 
some sort of hobby clubs, common rooms where people can gather, at least one area for barbecue or something like that. To communicate and spend time together, I would like to see a neighborhood where one could get around without a car and driving into a garage because things like that should be a distant past by now. There is nothing like that here. People think that if you install solar batteries, various screens and robots, this will be the future. No, that's showing off. The future looks different. So the Koreans failed this test. Everything has to be changed. Build a new district and surprise the world. They're actually building a village with these townhouses and they're just selling it at a higher price. They invented such a promotional campaign by telling everyone that this is the future, about some amazing innovative things. And in reality, this is just a village in the middle of the countryside. Of course, Busan could not help but take advantage of its location. So apart from the beaches, there is a famous fish market here. Look at this fish location pointer behind me. What is it? It is the famous Yigalshi fish market, one of Busan's landmarks. As it's a port city, of course, there are plenty of fish. And when there's a lot of fish, there's a fish market. This is where we are going. Of course, Busan is famous not only for its fresh seafood, but also for their fish cakes and fish grapes. They usually buy, bring home these grapes to reheat them afterwards. But if you don't have a home, that's okay, they'll reheat them right here. And you can eat them now. In addition to the official market, there are a few outdoor stalls. And it seems that they're selling fresh catch here. There's a lot of good stuff. There are some fish, crabs, octopus, squid. And most of them are fresh. The squid even have their own little pool. I can't believe I'm seeing this. There are the crabs from Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula. I'm just joking. It is the king crab, not the Kamchatka crab. Wow, amazing. Look at these incredible octopuses. They are giant. There are some frozen ones too, but they also sell a live octopus here. All the fish looks very cool. Just out to sea. It makes you want to buy all that, take it away and eat it. All around these buildings are never-ending stalls with fish. In these indoor market there are small shops, where everything can be cooked for you. They all look the same, there are a few dozen of them. At first it may appear to be a pet shop of some sort, because there are fish tanks everywhere. They have live fish in the tanks, but no, one chooses live fish and it is promptly cooked in a primitive way. Oh, I can see eels, clams, they're just climbing out of their shells alive. And here are small octopuses. It's a fantastic market, all very colorful. There are sounds of water everywhere. And it also impresses me with an impeccable cleanliness. Although there are plenty of fishing boats and fish, it usually doesn't smell very fishy, which is usually the case. Of course, there is also modern Korean culture to be discussed. Everyone has heard of the Squid Game series. The Korean film Parasite recently won an Oscar. But the main phenomenon is Korean K-pop music. The last time I was in Korea, I visited the K-pop museum. Back then, I didn't understand why so many people love bands with pretty boys and girls who look all the same, who sing in Korean and dance to modern music. The popularity of K-pop and other products of Korean culture are united in a general term, the Korean way. Perfect examples of this phenomenon were the series Squid Game and 2019 film Parasite. We also shouldn't forget Sai, who became a YouTube sensation in 2012 with his Gangnam Style video. It now has more than 4 billion views. The Korean wave began in the mid-1990s, when TV in Asian countries used to broadcast series called Doramas. 
These programs were broadcast not only in Asia, but also won people's hearts all over the world. The Korean authorities and businessmen took advantage of this wave of popularity and began to invest large amounts of money in culture. As a result, the world got a famous Korean drama series and young vocalists the fans call idols. But Korean youth do not live by K-pop alone. They also have unusual caricatures. An important part of contemporary Korean culture is Kakao friends. These Kakao friends are cute little animals, teddy bears, kittens, something like the Russian Kikoriki cartoon. Who are these Kakao friends? There is a messenger app in Korea called Kakao. This consists of different services like a taxi service, different portals, it's like Yandex in Russia. Ten years ago these characters were released, and they are everywhere. They have cacao friend shops in every city. There are soft toys, household items, clothes and other items for cacao fans. It is worth noting that these animals are incredibly cute. Even if you don't live in Korea and do not use their messaging services, they make you want to go and buy them because they are so Korean, so cute. We bought this very cute dinosaur who has something on his stomach. It's called a... Ah, it's a crocodile. Well, it's a crocodile cat. But the coolest of them all is JG. This is JG, and he has a cool hairstyle. These shops are huge. This one has four floors and a cafe on the fourth floor. It is very important to make good promo characters for your products. Look, a taxi. This is a cacao taxi. It resembles the Russian company Yandex because of the colors. There is a rabbit with this little cute crocodile. I've told you they're everywhere. They have a lot of fans around the world who absolutely love them. At this beautiful moment, it is time for me to say goodbye. Korea turned out to be an amazing country with its own culture, historical heritage and dynamic modernity. Koreans managed to build a future after a terrifying civil war. Not even a neighbor threatening them with nuclear missiles that just behind the fence could stop them. The division of the Korean people who were once united reminded me of something. Look. A country went down a path of progress and development. The other closed the borders and began to build totalitarianism. You know what I mean. But unfortunately, not all countries here are capable to learning the Korean lesson. That's all, folks. This was South Korea. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to like and leave comments. Also, share this video on Reddit and send a link to it to your friends on WhatsApp.